Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the last week of NPTEL MOOC course on laser based manufacturing. This is week 8, that is the last week. In previous weeks, we have studied the fundamentals of lasers and their applications in a variety of manufacturing processes such as material removal, joining, additive manufacturing and forming. Moreover, we have also seen the application of lasers in manufacturing automation. So, in this week, we will be studying some advancements uh, in the application of lasers in manufacturing processes. So, let us start the lecture 1 of week 8. As I mentioned, this week is dealing with the advancements in laser based manufacturing and in the first lecture of this week, we will be studying how lasers can be utilized to improve or to enhance the productivity of material forming. In one of the previous weeks, we have studied the laser based material forming, but there were certain limitations of applying the lasers to get the productive uh, material forming. Now, here we will be uh, studying how exactly lasers can be used to enhance the productivity of material forming. So, let us begin the lecture. We have seen in one of the previous classes of uh, this course, laser material forming or laser based material forming and in that lecture, we have seen how the lasers can be used as a non-contact type of manufacturing process, so contactless or without tool, how can we deform the materials. So, if you recollect that arrangement, so we, we had taken one plate or the workpiece. So, this is the workpiece or a plate. which was clamped at one location. So, this is the end which was clamped and then we irradiated the workpiece by using a laser. So, here the process parameters were chosen in such a way that there should not be any melting. preferably no melting should be there, but in certain cases the melting will occur. So, the process parameters are applied in a such a way that no melting will be there and then there was a deformation of the workpiece towards the laser head and this deformation was the plastic deformation and it was attributed to the generation of thermal stresses that, that were induced during controlled heating of the sheet metal. So, we had seen various mechanisms of that, the temperature gradient mechanism, upsetting mechanism and the buckling mechanism. We also seen the advantages of this process that there is no need of any tools, dies and that saved a lot of time, the product lead time was very less. This process was found to be useful for sheets plates, foils, even pipes to be processed and the laser based bending process was useful for metals, non-metals and for the composites as well. Well, when we look into the literature which is available on the research which is going on in the laser based forming, see this laser based forming can be classified or can be divided into a number of groups and these groups are there in front of you. Here the research on laser based bending or laser based forming can be divided into curvilinear laser bending, multipass laser bending, laser assisted bending, then application of forced cooling, generation of complex shapes, application of soft computing techniques for optimization of the process and use of inverse analysis. Further, some research was also noted on use of some coatings which were to be applied on the work surface to improve its productivity. 
So, let us see what is the meaning of curvilinear laser bending. So, in our previous slide we have seen that the laser was applied in a linear fashion, in a linear way. What happens when we apply the laser in a curvilinear fashion? It may be a parabolic uh, shape or it may be any uh, free curve or any plane curve or it may be a space curve. When we apply the laser in this curvilinear fashion, what would be the deformation? And can we use this deformation for our purpose? So, this is the one primary area of research that can we apply lasers for parabolic irradiations or we can use like we can use Bezier curves. So, any any curve which may be a plane curve or a space curve. So, what would be the deformation when we apply parabolic or the Bezier curve? So, here when we apply the curve in a linear fashion, we have seen that there is non-uniform bend angle was produced along the line of hitting. We have seen that at the end or at the end of the pass, the bend angle was low while the bend angle was more at the middle of the pass, at the middle of the scan line. So, that non-uniformity can be reduced by using some non-linear type of laser bending. So, this is one good area of working and lot of people are working to see what would be the effect of curvilinear laser bending. Moreover, the curvilinear laser bending can also be used to deform the metal sheets for 3D shape generations. Then the next area people tried like multi pass. So, here multi pass means number of passes to be find out, so, the optimal number of passes. So, how many number of passes are required to get a melt free or the deformation without melting and it should be the maximum. So, for this purpose we have to optimize the number of passes. Not only optimization of number of passes, we can even optimize the process parameters for each pass. So, optimization of levels of parameters for each pass. So, this is one another area where people are working. Then the coating, we have seen that the laser bending or laser forming is not suitable for reflective surfaces. Suppose we are using aluminum which surface is very clean and most of the energy is getting reflected. There is very less absorptivity or in certain cases there may not be any absorptivity of laser beam. So, can some coatings be applied to improve the absorptivity? So, what would be the coatings and what should be their thickness? So, this is another area where we can work so, effect of surface coatings in the improvement of laser forming process. Then the next area is forced cooling. So, we have seen that TGM that is a temperature gradient mechanism. In temperature gradient mechanism, it is very essential to achieve the temperature gradient, the effective temperature gradient or significant temperature gradient. So, how to achieve this? So, here the effective temperature gradient can be achieved by cooling the bottom surface. When we are applying the laser on the top surface, if the material is conductive, we may not get the significant temperature gradient across the thickness. So, in that case, can we apply some cooling mechanism at bottom of the sheet? It may be the uh, forced convection by using air or by using any fluid say water or we can even use some sort of uh, solid material such as ice or even people can try to apply the nitrogen as well. So, can we apply a cooling at the bottom to get 
the significant temperature gradient and how to develop the experimental setups, how to come up with a viable uh, setup for the industrial production. So, all these are the research questions where one can pitch in and can solve the problems. Then shape generation, in our previous class we have seen that the simple TGM or we have seen a very simple example of linear heating. Consider we want to manufacture a very complex shape, a saddle shape and what would be the irradiation patterns, what could be the optimal parameters for generation of 3D complex shapes. So, this is another area. Then optimization, so optimization of laser process because the laser based manufacturing is very expensive, its efficiency is less. We have to pump a lot of energy to get the required laser beam at the workplace, at the application. Therefore, it is very essential for us to apply the optimal levels of process parameters. So, here not only the hard computing processes, the soft computing processes also helping us to solve the optimization problem such as genetic algorithm or the simulated annealing type of optimization methods. Then inverse analysis, so we have seen in our experimental uh, study of the laser based forming that can we correlate the laser based bend angle which is generated with the process parameters. So, consider problem in which we want to achieve a specific bend angle of 15 degrees. So, can there be a system which will derive or which will suggest the optimal level of process parameters in an inverse way or the laser based bending has many unknown parameters that is absortivity. During the process of application, the material properties or the surface properties are getting changed and the absorptivity values are also getting changed. So, what could be the effect or what could be the effect of bend angle or what could be the relation of the bend angle with the absorptivity? Because the entire success or the success of laser forming is dependent upon the surface uh, property that is absorptivity. So, during numerical analysis as well, the surface absorptivity or the laser beam absorptivity is the crucial parameter. So, can we have some sort of mechanism which will predict the absorptivity during the process of the study itself and that can be applied for the computation of bend angle in the inverse way. So, is it possible to have such mechanism that would be a, a very good tool for the process uh, engineers, the process planners or the process simulators. Now, let us uh, quickly revise the TGM that we have seen. So, in TGM we have seen that a laser we are applying on the surface and when we apply the laser there is conduction of heat in the surface due to laser material interaction at the surface. So, there is a heat generation and that heat is getting dissipated, it is getting conducted inside the work material. So, naturally the temperature at the top surface is high and as we move along the thickness direction, it is getting reduced. So, this gradient has to be significant, this difference has to be significant to achieve the deformation. Now, what is happening when there is a enhancement in temperature at the top fibers, these top fibers are trying to expand. However, the surrounding material, this is the surrounding material which is at normal temperature, at ambient temperature and that is going to restrict the expansion of top fibers. And due to this restriction, they are applying the compressive stresses on the top fibers. Now, this expansion is occurring when there is application of laser beam. As the laser beam is pass over the material, then the surrounding cooler medium which has generated the compressive stresses, that stresses will overcome the expansion of the fibers and there we will get the bend angle towards the laser beam. 
So, this is the bend angle that we got towards the laser beam. So, here was the laser beam and we got the bend angle towards the laser beam. So, in our previous lecture we have seen some experimental setup as well to get the bend angle for the mild steel specimen. So, this is the mild steel specimen which was used to carry out certain preliminary studies. We have also studied the temperature which is generated at the top surface and at the bottom surface. Due to this difference in temperature at top and bottom surfaces, there is a generation of compressive stresses, compressive strain and that strain is leading to the bend angle. So, this is the bend angle that we got at the end of one pass, at one pass. Well, it is quite known that now laser can used for deformation of mild steel, which is a ductile material and commonly used material. And second point is that in one pass, the bend angle was about 1 degree, fine. So, metals can easily be deformed and 1 degree per pass is in normal we can achieve the bend angle. Fine, now the question is that can we apply lasers for difficult to deform materials or difficult to form materials. One such material is magnesium alloy or magnesium material which is widely used in aerospace applications which is widely used in the automotive applications as well. So, can we apply the laser to such material which is very difficult to deform by using mechanical bending. So, in this way let us see whether it is possible to use the lasers for such application. So, this is the topic of the lecture that is the bending of difficult to form material that is magnesium using lasers. So, let us see the magnesium material. Magnesium is having a low density, it is having very high specific strength and stiffness. It is also having superior damping capacity, it is also having high thermal conductivity, good electromagnetic shielding characteristics. So, all these are the positive characteristics or positive points or advantages of the magnesium alloys and that is why the magnesium alloys are widely used in aerospace applications. However, the magnesium alloys are having low ductility at room temperature and therefore, there is a formation of cracks during normal bending operation. That has been observed with variety of literature that when we try to deform the magnesium at room temperature there will be cracks during the deformation process. To verify this fact, it was tried to deform the magnesium sheet by mechanical bending. So, that experimental setup is in front of you. So, we got a sheet here, this is the worksheet and the worksheet is clamped. So, these are the fixture plates. And now, by using a handle and plate arrangement, we will try to deform these magnesium worksheets. So, let us see what happens. So, when we deform this worksheet to get certain plastic deformation, there is a formation of cracks on this surface. So, here you can see 
we could successfully deform this worksheet here. However, on the rear surface of that bend, we got lot of cracks. So, these are the cracks which were occurred at the rear surface and such cracked material or such cracked workpiece or products are very dangerous. We cannot accept that particular product for the intended purpose. Now, the question comes how to tackle this problem. So, it has been noticed that the formability of magnesium can be increased at an elevated temperature. So, if we increase the temperature of magnesium, we can easily deform the magnesium material at elevated temperature. To verify this or to study the feasibility of applying lasers for magnesium deformation, the experiments were carried out. So, here you can see these are the results of laser bending of magnesium alloys. So, we have taken a magnesium alloy M1A, the sheet thickness was about 1.9 mm and the composition of that alloy was magnesium 98.07 percentage and manganese of 1.93 percentage. The initial investigations were carried out by varying four parameters that is laser power, scan speed, standoff distance and beam diameter. So, these levels are there in front of you. The laser power was varied from 300 to 500, speed was varied from 1000 to 3000 mm per minute, standoff distance was 20, 30 and 40 and the beam diameter was 3.87, 5.81 and 7.74. So, here you can see this is the magnesium alloy sheet. and a coating was applied on its surface. So, this is the graphite coating to improve the absorptivity. Fine. Now, the experimental setup was developed on a CO2 laser machine and that CO2 laser machine is there in front of you. It is 2.5 kilowatt CO2 laser machine with the CO2 gas that is the lasing medium, nitrogen gas and the helium gas. Well, the experimental setup is there in front of you. So, here you can see the worksheet which is clamped in a fixture and this is the laser head through which we are applying the laser beam. The other parts of the machines are there such as the display board, control panel and the pressure gauge to control the assist gas. So, the worksheet was about a dimension of 70 mm in length. 40 mm in width and the thickness was around 1.9 mm and as I mentioned the worksheet was cleaned by cloth, the dust was removed and then the graphite was applied to improve the absorptivity. Fine, so this is the graphite spray coated specimen before the application of laser. And after the application of laser, this photograph is shown over here. So, here you can see there was certain melting at the scan line. So, when we apply the laser, some melting was noted and there is a damage of coating along the scan line, so which is very natural. So, when we apply the intense laser heating, the coating was damaged and some melting was noted. Now, it is interesting to note a bend angle, a deformation. So, here you can notice the material was successfully deformed for a laser power of 500 watts, scanning velocity of 3000 mm per minute and a beam diameter of 3.87 mm. So, 
Thus, the difficult to deform the material was also deformed by using laser. Now, let us see the rear surface of that laser bent specimen. So, we have seen that during mechanical bending, the rear surface at the rear surface there were some cracks which may get propagated and there is a chance of the breakage of the material. So, here we observed in the optical microscope the rear surface of laser bent specimen. So, this is the laser bent specimen. And at the rear surface, here you can notice that there is no cracks produced. So, certainly there were no cracks on the rear surface and that led to the successful deformation of M1 A alloy using lasers. So, with this successful deformation then the experimental study was carried out in full fledged manner. So, here you notice the experimental matrix and corresponding results power, velocity, diameter and if you just look at the bend angle variations. So, you can just notice that the maximum bend angle achieved was about 1.1. 4 to 5 degrees and the minimum it was around 0 0.107 degrees. At certain process parameters there was no bend angle noticed. There was insignificant bend angle. It is due to the very low power that is applied. Now, instead of applying a single scan, we applied multiple number of scans. So, after 10 number of scans, it was noticed that a maximum bend angle achieved was around 15.39 degrees and the minimum bend angle was around 0.86 degrees. So, in this case for a single bend angle there was no bending, no deformation. So, when we apply multiple number of times the same process parameters then there was very minor change in the deformation was noticed. However, it is very interesting and encouraging to note that there is a multifold enhancement in the bend angle for the process parameters 500 watt of power, 2000 mm per minute of the velocity and 3.87 mm of the laser beam diameter. You just notice that there is an enhancement of the bend angle from 1.425 degrees to 15.39 degrees, it is around 12 to 13 times the bend angle is improved. So, we have seen that the lasers can be applied to deform the work material. Now, it is also important to study what is the effect of the application of laser on the mechanical properties of the specimen. So, to analyze this or to study this, the tensile behavior of laser bent specimen was studied. So, that arrangement is there in front of you. So, here we have taken the specimen and we irradiated the specimen along its length. So, here you can see the scanning direction is along the length of the specimen and we have taken another specimen and we irradiated that specimen along the transverse direction not along the longitudinal direction. So, here you notice that in transverse direction the laser is applied with respect to the specimen length. So, this is the tensile specimen dimensions which are there in front of you and we have carried out micro tensile testing to find out the effect of laser beam energy on the mechanical properties. So, 
So, when we plotted the stress with respect to the strain, we notice that there is little deterioration in the stress or the strength of the material when we apply the laser for processing. So, this is the base material. and this is the laser scan material. On x axis we have got the strain and on y axis we got the stress. Similarly, when we use a specimen where the laser scanning was perpendicular in that case as well, we notice that there is a deterioration in st strength of the material when the laser was applied with respect to the material which was normal, the base material. In case of the tensile behavior along the laser scan, it was noticed that there is 4.46 percentage decrease in the tensile strength and when we studied the tensile properties perpendicular to the laser scan. So, in that case there is a decrease in about 5 percentage in the tensile strength. Regarding the failure strain along the laser scan case it was around 15.48 percentage reduction and in case of perpendicular to laser scan there is a reduction of about 19.5 for the failure strength. So, this reduction is attributed to the thermal degradation of the material. Moreover, the hardness was also tested by using 500 gram load and it was noticed that the hardness of irradiate region was increased by 4 percentage. So, it is very interesting to note here that the strength of the material got reduced, however, the hardness was improved by 4 percentage. Here we can notice or here we can conclude that of course, there is a degradation of material properties, but it is marginal, it is not that significant by 4 to 5 percentage the mechanical property or the strength is getting reduced. However, there is enhancement in the hardness, so that is the advantage of laser based processing of the difficult to form materials. The mechanical processing of the difficult to form material was producing cracks, but with lasers we got the crackless deformation with little reduction in the strength and improvement in the hardness. However, during this processing it was noticed that there is a severe surface melting. So, here you can notice that there is a severe surface melting and that is affecting the formation of bend angle. When we are expecting the bend angle should be 15 degrees or 20 degrees, we could achieve around 8 degrees of bend angle with severe surface melting. Now, what could be the solutions to this? So, here there could be 3 solutions. First is we can use lasers and then we apply the mechanical power. So, we can take the assistance of laser to improve the formability, to preheat the material and then we apply the mechanical power. Then the next is improvement in surface absorptivity and working at low power. So, you improve the surface absorptivity by certain coatings and you apply the low power. So, by applying the low power the chances of surface melting would be reduced and you can get the efficient uh, bending done. But in this case to get the higher bend angles we have to apply the low power laser for multiple number of times and when we apply the laser for multiple number of times there is a damage of the coating. So, we have to apply the coating number of times that may hinder the operation that may obstruct the laser beam operation. So, the second solution has certain limitation is that application of frequent 
coating on the surface will intervene or interrupt the laser based bending operation. Then the next solution is forced cooling. So, can we enhance the temperature gradient by applying some sort of force cooling say nitrogen as I mentioned previously or by using ice or by using some cold gases at the rear surface. But making such kind of arrangement and executing the experiments or making such kind of arrangement and applying it at the industrial level on the shop floor it is tedious, it is a cumbersome. So, the first solution could be a feasible solution. So, let us try the laser assisted forming. So, can we use lasers for preheating and then you apply the mechanical loading to get the required bending done. Now, how can we use laser to assist the bending operation that is a mechanical bending operation. So, typical solution is there in front of you. So, this is laser assisted bending with moving mechanical load. So, laser is assisting. So, here we have taken the laser for the preheating of the worksheet and simultaneously we are also applying the mechanical loading at the free end. So, here we are applying the mechanical loading at the free end, we are applying the mechanical loading in vertical direction at the free end and that load is getting applied along the free edge as the laser beam is moving. So, here we should notice that the laser is moving and the mechanical loading is also applied in a synchronized way with the laser head. So, you keep on applying the laser beam and there is a application of the moving load along this direction simultaneously with the laser beam energy. So, this could be one solution and let us see how the solution is working. So, to implement this solution we can have a fixed block. So, to implement this solution we can have a clamping, a sheet is clamped in the clamping arrangement, there is a laser beam source. Here you notice that laser beam source is stationary because this is the usual arrangement in the commercial laser machines. The laser is stationary and we are moving the sheet. We are moving the sheet in x y direction by using the stage. As the laser is stationary, we have to use the mechanical loading in a fixed block. Only thing we have to increase the height of this roller which is getting touched at the free end by using some screw arrangement. So, as we move the roller in vertical direction, so that movement of the roller in vertical direction is applying the mechanical loading. So, this is called as the pre-displacement. So, we are applying the pre-displacement at the free end. Fine. So, this roller is having the line contact to minimize the friction. As we know that rolling friction is less than the sliding friction. So, that is why we are applying the mechanical loading in the form of rollers. Now, before development of the actual experimental setup, let us have the numerical simulation of this integrated methodology. So, the numerical simulation was carried out and that screenshots are there in front of you. So, here you can see that model is created. So, this is the sheet and this is the free edge of the sheet and then we are applying the roller. The laser beam is applied. Simultaneously, we are applying the loading in a vertical direction and movement of roller along the free edge with respect to the laser beam as well. So, as the laser is moving, the roller will also move and at the end we will try to see how much is the bend angle that we got. Is there any deformation? So, after numerical simulation it was noticed that there is a significant bend angle was produced. 
So, with this feasibility study, then the experimental setup was developed. So, this is the experimental setup in front of you. So, this is the worksheet and the fixture arrangement. And we have also got a support sheet. So, this is the support sheet and this is the contact roller. The worksheet is moving and the contact roller is fixed. It is a, in a fixed block and these are certain the machine arrangements which I have uh, done to have the roller contact with the work part. So, there is a height adjustment screw. So, by using this height adjustment screw, we are by using this height adjustment screw, we are deciding the pre displacement by what amount the roller has to move in a vertical direction with respect to the worksheet. It may be 5 mm or a 10 mm or 15 mm. So, after the development of the 3D model of the experimental setup, the actual experimental setup was fabricated. So, here you can see, so this is the clamping setup which was developed, this is the contact roller, this is the worksheet, this is the laser head and this entire setup was developed on 2.5 kilowatt CO2 laser machine which we have seen earlier, so it is a 2.5 kilowatt laser machine. The laser head was fixed, so therefore the moving load was also fixed. The, the relative motion of the roller with respect to the workpiece was carried out by moving the worksheet with respect to the laser head and the fixed block. So, this is the moving load setup. This is the height adjustment screw. So, this is the height adjustment screw by using we can increase the distance that is a pre displacement. Now, after development of the experimental setup, the graphite coating was applied on the work part and then we carried out the experiments and it was noticed that a very high bend angle was produced. You just notice around 14 degree of bend angle for one pass. Within a pass, a 14 degree bend angle was possible for a laser power of 500 watt, scan speed of 1000 mm per minute and beam diameter of 3.87 and the pre displacement here you notice is 10 mm. So, when we apply a 10 mm of pre displacement, a very significant bend angle was achieved which was earlier possible on with multiple number of passes say 10 or 15 number of passes you imagine for so many number of passes you have to input or you have to apply huge amount of electrical energy. So, here you notice a lot of experiments were carried out without pre displacement. So, this particular table will give you the idea how much is the improvement in the bend angle and the second section is the bend angle with 5 mm of pre displacement and the bend angle with without any pre displacement that is a 0 mm of pre displacement. So, you just notice that 1.07 was improved to 3.63. In a similar way, you just note here in all the process conditions there is improvement to the bend angle for multiple number of times. Now, let us see what is the temperature versus time history for the pre displacement type of bending and without pre displacement type of bending. So, here you can see temperature wise in both the cases is the same. The top surface temperature was about 450 in both the cases and the bottom surface temperature was around little more than 250 degree Celsius in both the cases. So, temperature wise there is no difference only there is an offset and this is offset due to the application of the mechanical loading. However, when we 
look at the x direction stress during the laser beam based deformation with preloading of 5 mm and 10 mm and without preloading that is 0 mm fine so here you notice that the blue color graphs are without preloading that we have already seen in our previous class but with preloading now you just imagine that on the top surface you know there is a compressive stresses being applied so all these solid lines are related to the compressive stresses at the top surface and these dotted lines are designating the tensile stresses and these tensile stresses are occurring at the bottom surface. So, dotted lines are with respect to the bottom surface. and these are the tensile stress positive and on the top surface there are compressive stresses. Similarly, we can also notice that on the top surface there is a compressive strain and at the bottom surface we got the tensile strain. So, this is the tensile strain and this is the compressive strain. Now, let us see how much is the increase in bend angle with pre displacement. So, on your screen you can see a pre displacement on x axis and the bend angle on the y axis. So, here we have plotted three line graphs, the one is for velocity of 1000 mm per minute, second is velocity of 2000 mm per minute and third one is 3000 mm per minute. The power was constant of 500 watt and the diameter of the laser beam was 7.74 mm. So, you can notice over here that the bend angle which is produced for pre displacement of 0 mm that is no pre displacement, no pre displacement. So, the bend angle was very very marginal very low and as we enhanced or as we apply the pre displacement of 5 mm. So, there is huge impact on the laser forming. So, you just imagine the bend angle is improved about 5 times. So, in this case 5 times in this case about 2 to 3 times and in this case about 2 times. Further we increase the pre displacement and then there is a again huge jump in the bend angle. So, here you just notice that bend angle is around 13 times more So, this signifies the application of lasers in forming to improve the productivity by assisting by assisting the mechanical deformation process. Fine. So, lasers can be used in a forming not in a direct way, we can also use the lasers in indirect way as well. The primary deformation is a mechanical deformation only 
but to improve the productivity we can preheat the material by using laser and in this way we can deal with difficult to form materials easily and we can enhance the productivity both the things can be possible well with this i would like to stop for today's lecture so in this lecture we have seen how the lasers can be used to improve the mechanical forming we will continue our discussion on application of lasers for some other manufacturing operations as well so till then goodbye thank you